When it comes to summons on Global Dokkan, you can't say that January has not been a spectacular month for you. Because there has just been so much to choose from in terms of good banners, bad banners, trash banners, you name it, we have had all sorts of summons available to us and we're not even halfway through the month. Today's video is going to be all about summons and we're going to be looking ahead to all of the remaining Dokkan Festival banners that are going to be available for Global at this very moment. Obviously that just means chasing JP's coattails to see what sort of mess they've left behind. And uh, we're going to see if you guys need to be saving up your stones for anything or if you should still continue to persist and finish all three rounds of these step ups. I have seen in my streams, in my comments, that some of you, rightfully so, because you're not whaled, you're not insane, you guys are still working on your New Year step ups. And I can't continue to stress enough just how valuable and fantastic this banner is. So if you guys are still working on this banner, feel free to keep doing that. More power to you. While you're at it, go ahead and like and subscribe. But some of you might be in the very unique situation where you've kind of achieved whatever you can out of these banners and either you don't want to continue pushing more stones on this New Year's step up because you feel like there are greener pastures out there or you're just tapped out. You want to summon on something different. You're done with the New Year's step up. You're done with the Dokkan Festival Super Vegeta summons. I know I am. Almost 4,000 stones and I got one extra copy of the guy. It, it, it was brutal for me and I know some of you guys have been struggling too. You know, like I said, greener pastures. Maybe you don't want to summon on that. Maybe you don't want to summon on the double rates. Maybe you don't want to summon on <laughs> meaningless world tournament summons. Maybe you want to look ahead. Some of you guys have been telling me in the comments, you want to save for trunks. You want to save for the androids. You want to save for this and that. Let's see what exactly there is in the future to look forward to. This doesn't include anything that is speculative for JP. We are strictly going to be talking about all of the Dokkan Fests that JP has already gone through that Global is set to get at some point. So let's dive in and take a look. All I had to do was basically just look through JP's various campaigns and uh, I found a couple that you might uh, be excited for. There's no Dokkan Festival banner here. Just wanted to show you guys that this is going to be the next campaign over on the global side with the start of the version z being less than a week away people Woo! if you guys haven't seen all of my version z update videos make sure to check all of those out a lot of cool things coming to the game if you guys have been on the fence about coming back if you guys have been on the fence about perhaps playing the game and you're just an admirer from a distance these videos will definitely help you get more prepped for what is coming up it's going to be awesome now let's dive in with the first of the dokkan festivals that's set to arrive on global at some point that is the AGL. Is, is it AGL? I forget. I think, yeah, it is AGL Trunks. Trunks and the Heart Virus Goku. So, this celebration was the birthplace for a pretty crazy banner unit in terms of damage. And uh, but, but let's actually take a look and talk about the Trunks. Let's not shy away from this unit first. Entrusted Will and Android Cell Saga. So, let's pull up this guy's TUR stats here. Entrusted Will, Android Cell Saga, key plus 3, 130% HP, attack and defense plus 170. Raises defense for one turn, cause immense damage to the enemy. Attack and defense plus 100%, attack and defense plus 100% when attacking. Great chance to launch up to two additional attacks. Launches an additional attack that has a great chance of becoming a super attack each time the character performs three or more attacks during battle. <laughs> that's, a lot to, that's a lot to digest there. So basically... The more additionals you have, the more likelihood you'll get more additionals and more supers. And all the while, you'll be raising your defense. So this unit uh, is basically the type of unit who's just going to be frantically slapping up your opponent left and right. And then the transformation kicks in after attacking six or more times in battle, which is actually not bad given its kit. So when he transforms into Super Saiyan, we get this guy right here. Love the animation, by the way. If you guys haven't seen that, go check out my reaction to it. Greatly raises attack and defense for one turn. Causes immense damage to the enemy. Three-year prediction. That's the passive. I like that. Attack and defense plus 100%. Great chance to perform a critical hit. Attack and defense plus 100% when performing a super attack and performs a critical hit once only. Plus an additional attack plus 50% when the target enemy is in attack down status or defense down status. Plus an additional attack plus 50% when the target enemy is stunned or sealed. High chance to stun the attacked enemy for two turns when all allies attacking in the same turn are Android Cell Saga category characters. It's a lot to process, but that is the AGL Trunks. But that's not all, because like I mentioned, the Heart Virus Goku 
is also a pretty hype unit on this banner. And uh, I'm actually sad, sad to say I'm a little bit more excited for this guy because I've never seen a unit who's supposedly dying but is getting stronger. Which I guess essentially kind of makes sense for the whole Zenkai thing for Saiyan. But it's just funny because this is the Goku that is pinched between sickness and an enemy. So at this moment during the anime, he wasn't exactly doing the most stellar job in holding off Android 19. But anyway, let's let's take a look at this guy. Turtle School, key plus three at 130%, greatly raises attack, causes immense damage to the enemy with a high chance of sacrificing 7% HP. It's a high chance of sacrificing 7%, which is, I think, very funny. It should be a guarantee, but they decided to design him else or another way. Attack and defense plus 100, raises attack and defense by up to 200%. The more HP remaining, the greater the stat boost. Key plus 5, chance to perform a critical hit plus 59%. Reduces damage received by 59%. And 59% chance of launching an additional super attack for 5 turns from the start of the turn. Plus an additional defense plus 59%. And reduces damage received by 59% when HP is 59% or less starting from the 6th turn. This guy basically won't go down quietly. Now, there's got to be another universe out there somewhere where this is actually what the Heart Virus Goku does in the anime, but we don't live in that universe. So this guy is just an anomaly, but one that I'm very much looking forward to running on my teams. <laughs> so honestly, this unit is what I'm more excited for on this banner. I know some people have been a little bit down on the trunks because uh, he's very, I guess, bland was kind of the common complaint. But this is the, uh, the next... Dokkan Festival celebration that we should be getting uh, at some point. This is the return of the Vegito Blue and the Rosé. Also the Extreme Z uh, battle for the LR Trunks and all of that. So that is the possibly next big Dokkan Festival celebration that we get. But let's move on. Let's, uh, let me close out all these. <laughs> it's Heartfire's Goku, but he's funny. He's a funny one. This is the one that a lot of people are really excited for. The androids. Because these androids do some things that uh, just don't seem fair. Uh, that's, that's, that's probably the best way to put it. So let's actually take a look at this banner. Let's take a look at Tech, Android 1718, and Int, Android 19, and Dr. Zero, and most notably, the return of the Super Vegeta. So for those of you who have been on the fence about potentially summoning on that banner, this is probably going to be the primary reason why you don't want to worry so much about that banner, because also, not only that, Broly comes back on this banner on the JP side. So it is very likely that this will be the same formula when it arrives on Global. But now let's take a look at these two units. Let's actually start with the banner one. Undetectable Killers, Dr. Zero, Android 19. These guys are ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. I originally wanted these two to surface as a friend unit, but I'll take this. Androids, 120% key plus 3. Raises attack and defense for one turn. Causes supreme damage to the enemy. Recovers 10% HP. Attack plus 200. Defense plus 190. Attack and defense plus 39% and disables enemy guard when performing a super attack. Okay. We're just getting started. Androids category allies. Key plus 3 attack and defense plus 40%. Okay. Foresees enemy super attack when HP is 39% or less. This will probably never be the case, but it's also a very nice insurance policy. Absorbs key blast super attacks directed at the character from the enemy and recovers 39% of the absorbed damage as HP. This is an absolutely bonkers banner unit. The age of the banner unit being arguably as good or sometimes maybe even better than the Dokkan Fest is in full swing now. It all started with that physical TN back during the, the simultaneous downloads last year, worldwide download. Since then, Dokkan has done a really good job of making most of their banner units ridiculously uh, appealing. So that is what these guys are capable of. They basically are immune to Key Blast. And uh, <laughs> they, they give you... 40% health back. I mean, seriously? Really? Foresees enemy super attack and everything. This, this team is stupid. Raising attack and defense. Also healing in the super attack. It's just not fair. Now let's take a look at the headliner unit. The Tech Android 1718. Worldwide Turmoil. Future Saga. Key plus 3. HP, attack, and defense. 170%. This is the first... 170% across the board leader skill for the Future Saga. And also, this is more of the Z Future Saga. So this is a very strong leader skill here. Raising attack and defense for one turn causes immense damage to the enemy and seals super attack, which is good. When you raise your defense and seal, it's a pretty nice combination. Attack plus 170, defense plus 180. Randomly changes key spheres of a certain type, tech excluded, into tech. Plus an additional attack and defense plus 35% per tech key sphere obtained. 
or plus an additional attack plus 18 and defense plus 17% per non-tech keyster obtained. They just cover everything. Plus an additional attack plus 70 with 7 or more keysters obtained. Plus an additional defense plus 80 with 8 or more keysters obtained. Okay, these are kind of insane. Key plus 1 plus, or key plus 1 in addition per rainbow keyster obtained. Launches an additional super attack when HP is 35% or less. Nullifies key blast attacks directed at the character from the enemy when HP is 35% or more. Or more. So when you're winning, you're going to win even better. <laughs> That's what that means. Active skill. We have our second Ghost Usher effect, the first of its kind for an extreme class unit. Delays a single target's enemy attack for one turn. Can be activated in facing only one enemy, whose HP is 35% or more, or can be activated upon entering attacking turn when facing three or more enemies once only. The conditions are also amazing because it basically fits both standard archetypes for endgame content. Super Battle Road, three or more. Legendary Goku event, Vegeta event, one or more. So this is an extremely generous condition. The overall build of the unit is ridiculous. The leader skill is top tier. Super attack is solid. So yeah, this is probably the unit that a lot of people have been waiting for, and rightfully so. So whenever this drops on global, I would imagine some of you guys would probably be ready and chomping at the bit to do your summons. So yeah, like I said, New Year's step up is still good, but the Super Vegeta Dokkan Festival, you might have an argument, a valid argument, to say, eh, I'm good, because I could wait for this one. Now let's move on to the next Dokkan Fest. But before we do, let's just do a quick rundown of this campaign here. Anything else to take note of? New stages, Super Battle Road. Extreme Challenge campaign. This is also the arrival of the EZA for the LR1718, I believe, right? This is when we got that. Uh, yeah, this is when they got the Extreme uh, Awakening. Then we also had the Android 17 and the Hellfighter 17, the two pieces needed to create Super 17. All of those were also given their moment to shine in this campaign. So that's a nice one. Now let's move on to the third and most recent Dokkan Festival to release on JP. That is for the new year. We have Super Saiyan, Goku, and Kid Buu. So let's take a look at this Dokkan Festival banner right here. Where is it? Where is that? Oh, right here. Dual Dokkan Festival banner. I don't know why I moved off. All right. We've got our Super Saiyan 3, Son Goku. And we've got the Kid Buu. These two units are a pack and a half. So let's unpack these right now. So let's go to this one. Let me pull Kid Buu up here. Kid Buu and his T-U-R. Okay. Let's start with Super Saiyan 3. Battle of Fate or Accelerated Battle. Key plus 3, 130% HP, 170% attack and defense. Raises attack and defense for one turn. Causes immense damage with a medium chance to stun the enemy. Passive. Key plus 2 and attack and defense plus 180%. Attack and defense plus 50% when performing a super attack. Launches an additional attack that has a medium chance of becoming a super attack. High chance to perform a critical hit. Transforms into Super Saiyan 3 when HP is 77% or less. Starting from the third turn from the start of battle. All right, when we go Super Saiyan 3, what are we looking at here? Greatly raises attack, raises defense for one turn, causes immense damage with a medium chance to stun the enemy. Pretty nice. Kind of reminiscent of uh, the Super Saiyan 3 int Goku. Key plus 3 attack and defense plus 200%. Attack and defense plus 50 when performing a super attack. Launches two additional attacks, each of which has a medium chance of becoming a super attack. Plus an additional attack plus 50% when attacking. A great chance to perform a critical hit. For six turns from the start of the turn, high chance to perform a critical hit starting from the seventh turn. So you could, in theory, raise your defense three times in one turn. Also, while brandishing 250% attack and defense. Greatly raising attack three times means a six times boost for your attack. And then also, you've got vicious critical hit ratios from start to finish. So this guy is built to destroy worlds. This Super Saiyan 3 Goku. Really solid. Let's check out his counterpart, Kid Buu. Battle of Fate or Majin Buu Saga, key plus 3, HP attack 170, defense plus 130. This unit is stacking a pretty weak defense number. This is something a lot of people were taking exception to, but just wait till you see why. Raises attack and defense for one turn, causes immense damage with a medium chance to stun the enemy. Key plus 3, attack and defense plus 180, attack and defense plus 30 with each attack performed up to 120. 
So there you go. Attack and defense plus 300. Launches an additional attack that has a medium chance of becoming a super attack. Recovers 20% HP at the end of the turn in which an attack was received. Great chance of nullifying unarmed super attacks directed at the character from that enemy. So first of all, recovering 20% HP at the end of the turn is, I think, the first of its kind. I don't think there's another unit in the game that has the ability to heal that much at the end of a turn. I think going in, I think at most we have is like 15 or 18%. So this one is really solid. I don't think people understand that's a lot. And then also, you can nullify unarmed super attacks. So the fact that his defense is low, yes, that is a thing. But you're raising your attack and defense, possibly twice. You could get up to a 300% attack and defense. And then you have a permanent stack for the rest of the battle with the active skill, which is activated when there's a Majin Buu Saga category enemy or after having received six or more attacks in battle. So these are the two newest Dokkan Festival units to be dropping on JP. And looking at these banners, pretty healthy rotation of units here. On the Kid Buu, you've got the PyCon and Gohan, one of the best TWRs in the game. You've also got the Cell, kind of an annoying unit to see come back, I know. But Cell only appreciates in value, especially given the newer, more difficult events. Because Cell is that free heal when your health is below 30%. And then on the Goku side, we've got the Janemba, Bojack... Gobros, a standard unit on any starting uh, Dokkan account. Also Kamehameha, solid category lead here with the Gohan. So yeah, both units have pretty nice banners. But out of the three, if I had to make a choice regarding which of the three Dokkan Fests I'm most excited for, I'm probably going to say that the Androids one has my undivided attention. Not to take anything away from these ones. I think that this Heart Virus Goku is going to be a smash hit for me. And I think that the Super Saiyan 3 is going to be uh, ripping through events left and right whenever we get this on global. But in terms of overall uh, Dokkan Fest level appeal, I feel like the androids have it made with the built-in PyCon or Ghost Usher ability, the nuking ability, the nullification, the ridiculous heal from the banner unit, and then all of the EZAs and stuff that we're getting here. I feel like this is probably my most anticipated Dokkan Festival. We'll have to wait and see what the order is going to be for us on Global. I would imagine it's still probably going to be the same linear format. It's going to be Trunks, Goku, then the Androids, and then Super Saiyan 3. But hey, you never know because Global Dokkan is kind of crazy. So there you have it, folks. That is a brief... Actually, not so brief. Whew. That is a look ahead for all of the Dokkan Fests that have released on JP. Ergo, the timeline, the upcoming schedule for the Global side of Dokkan. Like I said, if y'all are still working on these step-ups... Depending on who you are as a player, maybe you want to continue that or maybe you want to look ahead. So hopefully this video gives you some idea of what to look forward to. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like down below. Let me know in the comments which of the three Dokkan Fests is most exciting to you based on the units that I described and read to you. I feel like the androids would be the number one answer, but hey, it's just my opinion. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Also, be sure to subscribe for more dope content in the future and click the notification bell so that you let YouTube know you want to see more of my stuff. Do it! Thanks again, stay tuned, and always remember to Dokkan responsibly.